He is not a stranger to this house. One of the people that we really honor, treasure, and appreciate. I call him Ghana's preaching machine. The big engine. I have not yet seen anybody on that dimension. I'm a preacher. I can preach. I can hope very well. I preach with intensity and dynamism. But I see this preacher a better, a better preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> he is not just shouting, screaming. <laughs> He's not shouting, just screaming. He's learned. He's a scholar. His PhD is not our honorary doctorate degrees in a way. It's a, it's a real doctorate degree. I've studied for it. But he has been able to articulate academia to the theological aspect of the work. And so when he's speaking, he speaks to, he cuts across. And I love his style. Despite all the elevation that God has given him, he has the, he has the propensity of extreme Christian humility. We love him, we love his wife, we love his children, and we love the flame house. We love the flame house. Hallelujah. Francis, you can listen to this man for the whole day, you will not be tired. And, and he will not repeat himself. Every day he carries a fresh revelation. Can I hear a good amen? So I speak to the world, everybody who have joined us online, open your spirit. This is God's prophet. He carries grace and oil. You know, I don't easily call a person prophet. The prophets be brogana have in your money. But this, this is a prophet of God. Say amen. Help me welcome Dr. Justice Avevo, Ghana's preaching machine, PhD. I use scream. I can't hear the scream. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing to be in Revival 2024. Amen. So before we take our seats, I want you to help me. Let's celebrate our father and our mama. The one and only prophet and mama Dede. Come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate this power couple. Amazing people of God. I was telling Prof that um, yesterday when I log on and I saw the pictures, I was wondering what has happened. You know, within a short time, I don't know whether days, there was this massive transformation. If you follow a leader like this, you will become excellent by default. That's how it works. You know. Even if you don't like nice things. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is beautiful. This is amazing. You know. And... Can we please celebrate Prophet, Doctor, and Mama Rita Odru? Amen. A couple of months ago, I was preaching in London. I was um, in some few places in London. 
the first church I went to in Essex, back in. I was introduced and it, it was as if the people had known me already. So I sat there, I was a bit confused and I was just waiting to see what would happen. So just when I took the microphone, everybody started shouting, see, Prophet Udru. I'm like, I'm not Prophet Udru, I'm just a survivor. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, so right after I finished preaching by the grace of God, I mean, wonderful things happened. And many of the people ran to me, take, I mean, taking pictures and all that. And they were like, we have been following you uh, with Prophet Udru because we've seen him talk about you all the time. You know. So, this is how it works in the course of your prophetic journey. God will always position somebody in there whose assignment is to trumpet your name. That's all. And that person will see things you have not seen. He will pick things that you have no idea about. But that thing is just an assignment. And his assignment is to make sure you go up there. And I think that that is what Prophet Udo has done to my ministry personally. And I like to appreciate him right here on this platform. And I want all of you to help me celebrate our father one more time. Prophet Dr. Kofi Udo. Lift your hands to Jesus. I want you to pray in the spirit. For just two minutes. Damahasu Kadabahaya. Everybody open your mouth right now. Online, on YouTube, on Facebook. Right away. Everybody lift your voice. Now. Kadabahasi Katos. Kadabahasi Kadabahasi Katos. Eteko parite kapas para santa kaparata e kaparate kaparata basata rata vrete 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 rata Everybody lift your voice. Can I hear your voice? The Bible said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm a go Spirit of prophecy will come upon the church. The ability to know the mind of God and understand the mood of God and the meanderings of God and the maneuverings of God. Natula Makata, we cause a staring in the spirit. Natula Makona, vibrating all over the place. Natoma Kapaya, Sotala Makata, Ekototo say, we fail. We pray the blessings of Pula Makata, Pula Makote. We exercise dominion and authority in the name of Jesus. We pray. Hey, Suta Makata, tell him a call. Tell him second small. Everybody lift up your voice. You will never be the same after revival 2024. My Lord, Sunday. 
Let me hear your voice. Ten seconds more. Lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Akosa, five seconds, five seconds. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Two seconds, somebody pray. Lekotaya, revival in our ministers, revival in our lives. Yakata, Santa, Yakato, Sekete Yes. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Because you are God. We thank you because you are the self existent one. None like you. And none can be compared unto you. We thank you that for the many years we have followed you, you have been faithful. And the many times we failed, you have kept your word. The many times we couldn't hold on, you have maintained your faithfulness. Tonight, we lift our hands to say thank you. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for keeping us to even see the month of September 2024. David said, I laid down, I slept, and I woke. For God sustain me. Thank you for sustaining us. Through the storms. Through the high waters. Through the difficult moments. We are grateful O Lord. We thank you because we know. That you are leading us on a journey. And on a path. We are grateful tonight. That you have put us together. To release your spirit. Your presence and your power over us. Now tonight we ask that one more time. Rent the heavens. Oh Lord, rent the heavens. Echo your voice. Speak your word over our lives. Communicate your mind to us. In the name of Jesus, let none here, all lie and all sight, live the same. Now in the name of Jesus, we declare that Father, let all resolve issues be resolved. Sicknesses be healed. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead come back to life. Today, let there be a stirring of the atmosphere for signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus, we exercise our authority and dominion in Christ. And we pronounce that on this altar, none will live back with a sickness or with a disease. We declare that anything that troubles the mind of your people and wrestle with their lives and wrestle with their destiny. Today, we pronounce freedom. Freedom from the heavens and freedom on the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that let chains be broken. Let chains be broken right now. We command chains be broken. I heard in the spirit, new doors are opening. And therefore today, I speak from that word. The Lord, let new doors open for your people. Fresh opportunities. Ministries restored. Destinies restored. Relationships restored. Marriages restored. Lives restored. Families restored. Children restored. Joy restored. Lama Hasakas. Fata Lama Kotas. Atula makanda la babahaya, atola makataba. Now we march into the realms of darkness, and we take what the devil has robbed the church of. We march into the regions of evil and wickedness. The psalmist said, "Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the feet of the just." We take what God has said concerning our life, 2024, and even in the month of September, we pronounce manifestations of the promise of the Lord over his people. 
Now, O oh Lord, oil my tongue. Let me not articulate the wisdom of men or the understanding of mortal men, but transform my words into deep wells of understanding for your people. That everybody here will be looped into your will, your purposes for their life. And I pray the Lord, as we speak of your word, throw light into our spirits. That that which we must know will be made known to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we speak to controlling forces. Spirits of darkness manipulative demons online and on site whose assignment is to manipulate and misinterpret anybody's words here and the mind of your people we come against powers and forces that followed us from the office our home the marketplace here to deny us of the blessing we pronounce this is the gathering of the saints and therefore let every other influence of darkness be cut off the mighty name of Jesus arise on your throne do mighty works among us but take the glory for yourself in Jesus mighty name if you believe that put your hands together for the Lord please take your seats how many of you can feel the vibration of the spirit already there is a vibration in the spirit Judges chapter number 7. God is in the midst of us. Judges chapter number 7. The verse number 1. Then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and then come beside the well of Herod. So that the camp of the Midianites was at the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are so too many, bring them down to the water and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laughs from the water with his tongue as a dog laughs, you shall set apart by himself likewise anyone who gets down on his knees to drink the verse number six is said and the number of those who lapped putting their hand to the mouth to their mouth was 300 men but all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water then the lord said to gideon by the 300 men who lapped i will save you and leave the midianites into your hands let all the people go away, every man to his place. Father, bless the preaching of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. In every generation and in every dispensation, there is always a move. God will always try to institutionalize or bet for his agenda for the world. And so, it is almost difficult to see a dispensation passing without experiencing the move of God and the work of God in their lives. We trace the roots all the way to Abraham when God spoke to him and asked him to leave his father's house in Mesopotamia, which is current day Syria. Abraham moved out of the father's house without knowing where he was heading to. And we saw what God did with Abraham, used him and set the tone for salvation which was going to happen in thousands of years to come and anytime I preach I tell people that God is a long term planner 
He's never in a hurry to accomplish stuff. So we see that from Abraham, then we get to Isaac. In the days of Isaac, there was famine. And God used Isaac to bring economic turnaround or economic revival. When Isaac was, as a matter of fact, trying to run away from the situation. Then we move from Isaac to Jacob and we want to jump all the way to a man called Moses. The way God dealt with Moses and used Moses was so intriguing because um, the signs and the things that he did with Moses were one of its own kind. It doesn't happen in anyone's time. Because Moses was handpicked from the water, sent to the palace, raised in the palace, then sent back into the wilderness and was asked to return back to the palace and meet the Pharaoh. From Moses, we saw a man called Joshua who took over from Joshua. By the time we get to Joshua, you will begin to understand how God deals with individuals that he calls. When Moses died, Joshua went into hiding and God had to come to him and said to him on three occasions, three times, he repeated himself, have I not asked you to be strong? Because it takes a certain caliber of people to walk with God and to flow with God. Joshua spoke to the son, and he said, son, be still. Now, as a scientist and as a physicist, we can put a whole lot of argument around that statement, which I don't want us to go into. Whether there was a rotation or whatsoever, we just want to stay with the words of scripture and leave it that way. But what we understand is that he was the man who had authority even into the constellations. He can speak to the cosmic. That was who he was. Right after he died, the Bible said there was no leader, there was no judge, there was no leader again. There was no person to lead Israel. So people did what was right in their sight. The author of the book of Judges, of course, we understand is Samuel, which is under a whole lot of theological discourse and argument. But the event itself is so true. The Bible said the author of Judges gave a negative assessment about the people that live within that time of Judges. God has to raise people like O'Neill. Ehud, Samson, and Gideon to judge Israel during that time. And during the time that Gideon saw or came in as a man and Israel was in such circumstance, God figured out this guy and went for him. It is as though in every dispensation, God is always looking for someone to use for something. It is said that every generation brings forth its own great man. So in every dispensation and in every generation, there are people that God will raise and use to bear forth his agenda. So now God began to speak to Gideon. He appeared to Gideon. And he was going to use Gideon for a particular assignment. And the reason why God came to Gideon was because at that era in the life of Israel, there was apostasy, there was anarchy, there was disunity. There was passiveness. In fact, if you keep studying your Bible and you look at the last verse of Judges, that is Judges 21, I think the verse number 25, the Bible concluded on that same statement that people did what was right in their so it was the worst moment ever. If there was any time that Israel would need revival, this was the time. If there was any time that Israel would need revival or would need a restoration and a visitation from God, this was the time. Revival is always needed when we see disorder, anarchy, apostasy. We see disunity in the body. Everything about Israel from the call of Abraham to the call of Moses, from the deliverance of Egypt to the promised land, it mimics the salvation that Jesus was going to bring to us in the New Testament. So whenever we preach, 
and we want to try to understand this whole concept about salvation, we can always refer to God's original plan and the things he did with the people that went ahead of us. When God began to speak to Gideon, he said to him, he said, the people that are with you, they are too much for me. I don't want anybody to take glory for what I'm about to do. Because the numbers are a lot. And there is something about numbers. Numbers are important. If you look at New Testament theology, one of the reasons why the, the, the kings, the heralds of those days were afraid of the Sadducees was because they had the numbers. The numbers were important. So God said, I don't want to deal with this number. I want to deal with some different groups of persons. And the reason God gave was because he said, I don't want them to take glory for what I'm about to do. But tonight, I'm trying to understand why God had to select the people he selected. The people he selected, he said, number one, anyone in here who is fearful and is afraid, go home. Great number of the people departed and they left and went back home. Then he said, now, I want to run them through a test. I want them to lap the water. And I will set them apart. Please understand, church, that when God calls you or calls an individual, he sets us apart for his purpose. That is why we are called the ecclesia. They are called out. God has called us out. When they fasted and they prayed, he said, separate unto me these two individuals for the work for which I've called them. So when God calls you, he sets you apart. And because he sets you apart, there are things people do that you can't do. There are places people go you can't go. There are thoughts that come to other people's mind. It can't come to your mind. There are things you don't allow to rest in your mind. Not even for a second. And that is why Paul said, be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because you are called and you are set aside and set apart for a special assignment. This is the reason why I'm a man of God. I'm a preacher. There are places I can't go. There are things I can't say. There are things I can't wear. There are people I can't walk with. Help me now. I feel like preaching. Can I preach it? I feel like preaching. Help me, Holy Ghost. Abraham and Lot were working together. They were relations. But if you look at your Bible very clearly and you look at it very clearly, God never spoke to Abraham at a certain time in their walk. Immediately, Lot departed from Abraham. God told him, now lift up your head. The word Lot means a veil. And when Lot walked with Abraham, God couldn't speak with him again. Look at your scriptures. That is what is there. Immediately, Lot departed. God started speaking to him. When you are set apart, there are people when you walk with them, God will never come to you any longer. He will wait until you depart from that place. Am I speaking to somebody here? Why? Because God has called me. He has set me apart and consecrated me for his assignment. This is what you must understand. Your life will look weird. Your life will look odd. Your life will not look normal and ordinary because the one who has called you is not a normal God. It's not an ordinary God. It's not like one of those gods. And I pray tonight in the name of Jesus by the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost may the grace to be set apart rest on the body of Christ rest on the church, rest on alabaster, rest on Ghana rest on your ministry and rest on your destiny. If I hear your shout power locate please sit down I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, and I'm set apart. I'm called. God has called you. Kadima has us. Set them apart for me. Set them apart for me. I taught to my church all the time. I said, it's not because I'm looking for your money. I'm looking for something from you. 
By the grace of God, I'm well educated. By the grace of God, God has helped me. Read first degree at KNUST physics. Came to University of Ghana, read masters in medical physics. Went to University of Cape Coast, read PAD in medical physics. Won international recognition. Went to Trinity Theological Seminary. Read theology for two good years. If I'm looking for money, I shouldn't be on the pulpit. I shouldn't be on the pulpit. It's money I'm looking for. But I'm looking for something beyond that. So I said to my church, I said, whenever you are coming to church and you are bringing an offering to God, you must prepare the offering, set it apart. Don't pull out any money given to you by a mate somewhere nasty and dirty and when it's time to give, you look for something around your pocket and drop it on the altar and go, no, you have dishonored God. You have not set apart the thing that must go to God, a holy God. You have not honored God. And it is one of the reasons why some of your prayers have not been answered because you have dishonored the Lord. I taught my church, I said, when it is my birthday, I will teach you how to honor me because I am your pastor. It is not because I'm looking for something from you, but I'm teaching you something. How to set apart things for the man that God has called for you. I will teach you. And you will do it. Not because I need anything from you, but to teach you the right thing. The church must understand the place of setting apart. God calls people and he set them apart. For a particular thing. God says set these people apart for me. And when the Lord says set them apart for me. Man of God. I'm beginning to. I was now asking myself. Why has God selected these people? In my research. I figured out something that I want to communicate to the body of Christ right now. Now keep your case on me. Number one. I found out that the 300 people were less civilized men. They were less civilized. Number two, the 300 people were animalistic. They were not normal people. Because God asked them to do something that animals do. Then I found out that when God calls a man and is about to use that man for a reviver to cause any form of a reviver, that individual will go through ruthless training or training. Reviver requires ruthless, roughness, toughness. God doesn't raise babies. God raises tough men. When God is raising you, he will pass you through a tunnel of toughness. He pulled out Moses from the palace. It was a place of comfort. It was a place of peace. He doesn't, have you ever heard a prince talking about economic hardship? Princes don't talk about economic problems. They don't say we don't have money or we can't buy. They are the custodian of the land. They are the custodian of the they are the custodian of the money and the resources of the land so they don't talk about money they are the owners of money they move money, they move it around this was who Moses was if you don't know, Moses was a prince trained in Egyptian law, Egyptian philosophy Egyptian literature, Egyptian mathematics now God pulls him out and sends him to the wilderness for the next 40 years he was going to train him for a revival it was rough. Could not have Santas. When God is training you and raising the body for revival, it requires toughness. For those of you who don't know, Abraham was already rich when God called him. He was not a poor man. Abraham was selling idols. He was into idol business. And he was doing quite well when God called him. God calls him now and pushes him into the wilderness. And said, go, go out there. I'm sending you to a land. He never know the place. But he was just on. When God calls you. And God wants to do something with you. He's never going to play with you. God does not speak to you at your level. God speaks to you at his level. 
God does not deal with you at his level. God deals with you at his level. He doesn't deal with you at your level. He deals with us at his level. And so this is the reason why if you and I are following God and we are going to form, have any form or experience of a revival, our mindsets must be different. All over now, this place, we are not just only talking about spiritual revival, but the world in which we live in, the generation in which we live in now requires different kinds of revival. We need political revival. We need economic revival. In the dispensation in which we live in, God is looking for some people to raise who will become economical revivalists. How does history still talk about Rockefeller? Even though he was dead, he's dead and gone, history still talks about him as a believer who was a tied up and was the richest man of his days. Rocky Feller had to be a tough individual. Talk to politicians. Listen to the story of President Rollins. He said for 72 hours, he never slept. His eyes were open. That is toughness. You will need that level of toughness if God is ever going to do something with your life. You are not just a businessman. Your business that God is giving to you or what God has asked you to do is not just about you and your family. It's about the nation. It's about your community. Many people are going to rely on you and hang on your shoulders for their survival. And this is the reason why you are going to learn how to be tough and strong as an individual. And I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. May that spirit of the Lord rest upon you, come on you and help you to push you to that place where you can stand tough and stand strong. Clap your hands right now and shout, help me Lord. I'm sure if God had given Moses the plan and how the call was going to go, Moses would have retreated. But God never gives details of his calling. But thank God for you and I in our time. In their days, there was no script to guide them. But in our day, there is a script to guide us. In their day, there was no Bible to understand the names of God and the move of God and the meanderings of God. Job was one of the oldest men in his time. I said this. Job, at the time he lived, there was no organized religion. There was no priesthood. And that was the reason why after his children have gone to party, Job will offer sacrifices on his behalf. And right after the loss of Moses, no one was supposed to offer sacrifice if the person was not a priest. So by the time Job was offering sacrifices, there was no organized priesthood or religion during his time. But he understood he was one of the people to refer to God first as the almighty God. How did he know that? He saw a certain level of track record. Now, with you and I, we can look at Moses. We can look at Job. We can look at Abraham. We can see how God has dealt with them. Joshua, Gideon. We can come into the New Testament. We can look at the apostles. And we now understand how God works with individuals. And every individual that God has called. There was a level of rootlessness. You can never sit here. And think that one day God will use you to cause a revival in your home, in your family. That through you, families will be turned around and that is going to happen on a silver platter. You can never sit here and be wishing that one day through you, Ghana will be restored. Your community will be restored. Our nation will be restored. There will be a certain form of a revival. You can never sit here and think that will happen if you are not a person whose mind is tough. Manu has us. When God created animals, he fixed them in different places. If you ever go into the jungle and you watch animals, that is 
The life is supposed to be a survival of the fetus. You have to be able to hunt so you can survive. When you take a lion from the jungle and you bring it to the house and you domesticate that lion, you make that lion lose its ability to hunt. The ability to fight for itself, the lion loses it. So now it becomes a domesticated animal. I was in Kenya on my birthday, 3rd July. They took me to the national park over 170 kilometers square round. We drove for more than four hours waiting for the lions to come out. And these lions never showed up. We parked at the place for a very long time. They said they will come, they will come. They never showed up. I said to the tour guide, I said, sir, today is my birthday. I beg you, drive me back home. So, <laughs> We drove back. When we got to the entrance, I saw a cage and there was a lion inside. I said, why is this lion here? He said, this one is an orphan. I said, how can it be an orphan? How can a lion be an orphan? I don't understand. He said, when the mother gave birth to this one, the mother died in a certain form of a struggle. So, there was nobody to teach this one how to hunt. So, he cannot hunt. He would die. He has to be taught. So we have to bring him here into the cage. Into an electric fence. And feed him. 7, seven kg in the morning. 7 kg in the afternoon. 7 kg in the evening. That is 21 kg worth of meat. Every day. If you fail. To become tough. And strong. You become a burden. You'll be a burden to God and a burden to the family and a burden to the body of Christ. That lion failed. The mother was not there. He failed to learn how to hunt. And this is what has happened to many Christians and many believers. God has called you, but you are not tough. The slightest temptation and the slightest issue brought you down. A lady showed you her breast. That was how you lost your ministry. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not tough. A little wind blow at them and they are down. But I look at these 300 men that God has raised. He gave them an assignment that was animalistic. He said, lap like a dog. If you are able to lap like a dog, you are the one I will raise. You are the one I will walk with. And in every generation and dispensation, God is looking for people who are tough. God is looking for people who are animalistic. God is looking for people who are not conventional. God is looking for people whose mindset is not orthodox. Adila Masota, and I pray today in the name of the Lord Jesus, as a politician, a preacher, a businessman, you are about to rise up with an unconventional philosophy, an idea, an understanding, and perspective that will bring a turnaround to our system, to the church, and the body of Christ. I pray today in the name of Jesus. Jesus, like Jesus started preaching the Bible said they saw his power and they saw his authority and they asked themselves where has he gotten this power from because he was doing something that was tougher he would see demons and he said get out he goes to the tomb of Lazarus he said Lazarus come forth Anima Sokata. He goes to a place. A little girl was dead. He said, Everybody go out and bring the person back to life. I cut to security. I pray today for a businessman here, a businesswoman here, a pastor here, a student here, a politician here. In the name of Jesus, by the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, there is an oil that is about to rest on your head, rest on your soul for the 
toughness of your mind in the name of Jesus it will help you to bring a revolution in your season in your dispensation in your civilization and I prophesy over all those online and everybody in this room here God has called you as an evangelist God has called you as a prophet God has called you as a politician but we live in a wicked world we live in a wicked zone you must learn how to act like a lion how to be tough how to be strong be strong in the law and the power of his might you will not only survive but you'll be sustained that you will not only be sustained but you will prevail I prophesy over your life right now by the anointing of God and the power of the Holy Ghost anything that sat on you and suppress your life and brought you down there is another hand that is about to come upon you there is another spirit that is about to rest upon you and in the name of Jesus if I hear your sound right now let that power locate we are survivors we are men whose mind are tough we are men like the disciples they beat them and they tell them to shut up don't preach in this name they appear at a different place and he said who shall we obey god or man the reason why your business is going through a lot of toughness the reason why there is a lot of wind and storm around the church and the body of christ is because god wants to do something and the devil knows that once that thing happens he's out of business so he will throw everything at us and at you and i to make sure there is no form of a revival in the church in the economic situation in our country in our nation but we need men who are tough in mind we need men who are strong in spirit we need men who don't take no for an answer we need men they said to martin luther recant he said i cannot recant where i stand is where i stand i pray today may the lord raise men like that in my time may the lord raise men like that in your time raise men like that in our season in the name of jesus i prophesy over every man here over every woman here over our children over our churches by the power of god the lord is raising men and women whose hearts are strong whose minds are tough whenever you read the new testament and you hear jesus shout repent matineo that is the greek word it means change your mind change your mind change your mind let your mind change let your mind change your mind is too weak 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 your body cannot go to where your mind has not taken you to your mind is too weak god needs your mind to be tough god needs your mind to be strong am i communicating to somebody here like paul like peter like the disciples i'm praying today a student you fell out of school god is about to restore your mind clap your hands right now and shall do it lord Many years ago, my professor threw my PhD synopsis on the floor, on the ground, in his house at Kwabenya. Because I needed him to be a supervisor on that work. He said, this work doesn't qualify for a master's. He threw it on the floor. I picked it. Pick your life again. I picked it. I went home. I restructured that synopsis, that proposal. I didn't go to him. I went to another professor. He said, we can work with this. 
we started working. We started working. We were working. Working. <laughs> Three years after, I got an international recognition. That same work that was thrown on the ground. That same work that was thrown on the floor. I picked it up. I picked it up. I picked it up. I picked it up. Pick your life. Pick your life for revival. Pick your life. Pick your ministry. Pick your marriage. Pick your children. Pick your husband. Pick your wife. Pick your business. Pick your academics. Pick your political career. Pick your... Pick your life. When I won the award, I went to him and I said, Prof, this is what has happened. I've done a publication. I put your name on it. He said, you do? I said, he said, can I have a copy? I want to show it to the school. And I'm still ready. That's what he said to me. He said, Prof, I'll email a copy to you. If I had not picked my life, if I didn't pick up my life, your mind is too weak. No! My mind is too weak. Prof, do you know I pastored a church earlier? I had pastored a church before, starting my own ministry. I pastored people that were less than three for close to two and something years. I come to church every Sunday and we are where two or three are gathered. That scripture defines the ministry that I had from the beginning. Two or three were two or three. And we will, I will lead opening prayer for one hour. The reason I was doing that for one hour was because I was waiting for the one hour. One hour. One day a woman entered and said, Pastor, you pray here too much. Here yeah, you pray too much. I'm from Presby. Just let me join you. But I said, Mama, can't you see what is happening here? Two years. One Sunday we came to church. And the lady, she's called Enyona. She said to me, Pastor, today we are 17. I couldn't sleep. I was tossing. I was tossing on my bed. Long story short, we entered 100. By the time I was done there, we were about 220 something. Pick it up. For two years, few people. But we're in there. Your mind is too weak. Your mind is too weak. What the devil wants to tell you is that it's not working. So turn back. It's not working, so turn back. It's not working, so turn back. It's not working, so turn back. Your mind is too weak. When you see mommy and daddy celebrate, you think it's easy? You must be tough. Do you know what it means to be prophet Kofi Udru? You don't know what that one means. You don't know what it means. You must be tough in mind. Do you know what it means for people to do commentaries about you who don't know you? People you can feed. You can literally take care of them. And they will say all kinds of lies. And you watch and ask, is it me or who? And you wake up every day. You are seeing those things. Do you know what it means? You must be tough in mind. My spiritual father was building a house. He bought the land. They took it. But another one, he took it. The fourth one, he said, no way. We're going to do something and open his car. And there was a gun inside. He said, this is a Lance's gun. I said, Papa, why? He said, this land, nobody will take it again. He said, this is the fourth time. And nobody will take it. We went to the land and started building. One day he called me, he said, Justice, do you know the people came and broke the glasses? The window glasses. So every day we go there to the side with a gun. Standing. If you're a man, show up. It's not a matter of you are a bishop, you are a pastor. If you are weak in mind, people will ride on you. If you are weak in mind, people will take you for granted. You need a tough mind. You need a tough mind. You need a tough mind. God said to Gideon, these people are too weak. If you are fearful, turn back. I don't work with fearful people. I don't cause revival with people who are afraid. Am I communicating to somebody here? 
I don't deal with people who are always afraid. You want to see everything clear and well before you enter. No. No. You want to see everything well before you enter. No. You cannot. You cannot. You need a tough mind. That demon house at us. You will need a tough mind. And that is what God is doing. God is calling people right here. You from school, you from your place of work, you from a place, God is calling you. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, you are the one bringing revival to the body of Christ. You are the one bringing revival to our economy, revival to our space, revival in our nation. But God says, I need you to change your mind. I need you to repent. I need you to maternal. I need you to have a tough mind. I need you to have a mind that is beyond the mind of a simplicity person the man of an ordinary person the man of a lay person i need you to have a certain kind of a mind the mind let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus what was that mind it was the mind to survive it was the mind to walk against the storm to move against the storm it was the mind to do the will of god in spite of opposition it it was the man to arrive at the other side. Let this man be in you. I pray today. Hit your head. Come on now. Let your mind be revolutionized. May God give you a tough mind, a strong mind. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands right now and shout, I believe. Oh, oh. Oh, they put a belt on Paul's waist. He said, this is what shall be done to the man who is carrying this belt on his weight. He will not only be bound. Paul said, I'm not only ready also to be bound, but to die. That man must be in you. A whole Paul apostle, they put him in a basket and passed him through the lattice of the wall. Dropped him. By the next minute, he was still preaching. What kind of a mind is this? You lost a business, so you stop the business. You are a law, so you stop the business. Sadabahaya. A man disappointed you, so now you've looped your life in. Something went wrong, so now you are down. Pick up the pieces. I said, pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. The church will grow again. The business will grow again. Your life will grow again. Your life will become better again. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy over everybody here. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of the Lord rest on your mind. Rest on your spirit. Rest on you right now. From the days of John the Baptist up to now, the kingdom of God suffer and fallen. And the fallen take it by force you need a violent mind you need a violent mentality and i pray today in the name of jesus receive that fire receive that power receive that grace receive that oil receive that unction in the name of jesus clap your hands and give jesus the praise oh. listen if you are not tough, God will have no business with you. Yes, Elijah said, kill me. Am I the only one? Let me die. God said, go and prepare Elijah. Anoint somebody. I will take you away. You think God is here to play? God is not here to play. No. Your mind must be tough. You do check. People will bring one city, two city. And shout. And go back. God will leave you alone to think about how you pay the bills. <laughs> he will leave you. Think about how you pay. You dare not say, I'll, I'll stop the ministry. <laughs> I'm a house who attacks. When I started our church, Flame House, I went and picked a hall. They said, one hour, every two hours is $200. They said, can you pay? I said, yes, I can pay. When I left the place, the devil told me, go back and tell them it was a slip of time. You can pay. Started that church in the midst of doing that. We're paying that two hundred dollars every two hours. Somebody came in, great testimony. In the course of it, the university sent me two people to come and have a meeting with me. I was in the house and I had a call. 
They said, are you just Safa? I said, yes. said, we want to see you. Two, two men and one of them, they sat down. One of them was Sakura. You can see his head, wicked head. <laughs> wicked man. He looked at me and said, well, we have been sent by the school to meet you guys here. And uh, we the, the department has taken loan to build this and then the money needs to be recovered. So, henceforth, we have increased it every hour to pay 1200 If you can't pay, we kick you out. Those were his words. Yeah. We'll kick you out if you can't pay. No room for negotiation. I said, please, can we? He said, no, no, no room for negotiation. That meeting didn't last. I was sitting there looking at this guy. How can this man stand in my face and tell me, who is called? God has called me, you or me? No room for negotiation. I went back and I was wondering, how can this be? Root, the guy was rough and ruthless. He didn't care, church, care. Panel. There are people who don't care who you are. And God needs you to match up with a corresponding mindset and toughness of mind. Else, the church will go down. But Jesus said, I will build my church and the case of hell shall not prevail. Marakata Labahaya. Today, we activate corresponding power against witches and wizards, against warlords, against necromancers, against soothsayers, against wickedness and evil. In the name of Jesus, we release corresponding power against wickedness in our day. And I pray right now, by the anointing of God, receive that oil, receive that fire, receive that grace. Clap your hands right now and shout and receive it. to release you to pray but I watched a documentary recently of a young man in America the guy will pick girls date them and kill them they investigated it the last one he did he called his father to accompany him then he would rent a car and kill the put the body inside and go and leave the car deep in some wilderness somewhere the farmer saw it reported so when the investigation started they traced back his root, and that's what he does. He's a nice gentleman, nice looking, well built. But he was tough. Big, nice ladies. Date them and kill them. And I said, This is the world. The world is full of men like this. Do you know that Satan mimics God well? When God is looking for ruthless men, rough men. He also need rough men to use for his wicked agenda. If you are not rough, neither God nor the devil will need you. Neither of them will need you. Tonight, there is going to be a radical spirit that will come upon some people here. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will come back to Revival 2025. And you will say, I made a decision. It was a rough decision, but I made it. To step out and to step into my moment. To step out of darkness and to step into my season. It would take a rough man to step into his season. And that is it about these 300 men. They were not ordinary people. They were less civilized. They were very animalistic. Doing things that were not normal. And that is what God needs when there is going to be a revival. When Paul started preaching, he was not a normal apostle. Having to realize he was different from the rest. Having to realize that God has used him more than the rest. He said, I've done more than them. Not me by grace. Because he was not normal. Study his credential. You are sleeping throughout the night. From 9 to 5. You are watching series of movies. You are not reading any book. You are not studying anything around your area. Whilst people are manufacturing. Whilst people are at work, you are sleeping. And you want to become like one of them. No. Never. It cannot work like that. Tonight. In the name of Jesus. Your schedule is about to change. I said your schedule is about to change. I said your schedule is about to change. Your shadow is about to change. Your shadow is about to change. Your shadow is about to change. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There are many believers. 
who have been domesticated. They have been domesticated. Why can't God provide everything for us for the ministry? Why can't God provide everything for us for our life? Straight away, that things are just moving. Well, you can never be a strong man. You can never be tough when everything is at your disposal. You can never. You can never be strong when you snap your hand and things come to you. The hair, as long as it's a child, does not differ from a slave. You can never be tough. And that's why there are times you come here, you pray and pray 21 days fasting after the fast, things become more difficult. You fast and jump and drink all your anoint your leg, everything. After you finish, the letter is waiting for you. <laughs> Somebody came to me to pray for her. She said, man of God, I'm down. She came with her husband. He brought me a seat. I said, put it on her. I said, what's the point? I said, I prayed and fasted. And I went to America, embassy for visa, and they rejected me. I cannot. I was rejected. I was denied. In the way I fasted and believed God for many days of fasting and prayer. She was talking to me. I said to her, Me, you can refuse me visa six times. When I said that thing, she stood up on her feet. <laughs> she stood up on her feet. <laughs> I said, Each time they re reject me, I go. Each time they do, I go. Each time. Until I got it. If you don't have that in mind, if you don't have that mind, you are crying at the listing. You are weeping at the listing. You are acting like a baby. You are behaving like a child. At the slightest provocation, you are weeping. Where is my God? God, let them not ask, where are you? Stop that song. Let them not ask, where is my God? Let them ask, where is your God? I am here to prove where he is. Oh, Namasakatas. Kadabahasakatas. Put your two hands on your head right now. Reviver never come to people with weak mind. Weak mind. Weak soul. Fearful men who are afraid. Your mother died of breast cancer. So now you are afraid. At the little lump in your breast, you are afraid. You are afraid. You are afraid. You are afraid. Your brothers failed. Now, at the slightest symptom, you are also afraid. You are afraid. No, your mind must be tough. You know what is faith? Faith is not denying the existence of an issue. Faith is speaking a contrary word in spite of what you are seeing. So when the doctor gives you a report, Faith is not that I reject it all. I, it's not there. Faith is, this is what they are saying. But I have a superior word. And I have a superior mindset. Today in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, God is about to lift you. Whatever you do, the Lord is about to lift you. The Lord is about to lift you. The Lord is about to cause a turn around in your mind. Everybody lift up your voice. In the next five minutes, we want to pray. Hey, 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 Lift up your voice, everybody. Can I hear your voice? Can I hear your voice? Rabba, the Alabar Rabba, the 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 Rabba, the
You are a spiritual revivalist. You are a political revivalist. You are an economical revivalist. You are a scientific revivalist. Speak to yourself. Speak to your mind. You cannot be domesticated. You cannot be domesticated. You cannot be domesticated. <laughs> Toughness of soul, your heart must be tough. <laughs> Listen. One more prayer before we close. I am telling you by scripture, Prof. Almost everybody, everybody God calls, He runs them through some toughness. Jeremiah said, Ah, I'm a youth. He said, No, don't say that. Before I formed you, I've known you. You are my battle as with you. I'll bring down kingdoms. The guy said, I can't speak. Moses said, I can't talk. I'm a stammerer. God, he said, You can't talk. Aaron will talk for you. By you, I'll make you a god to Pharaoh. <laughs> but as for the assignment, you do it. You say, You can't talk. Somebody will talk for you. Yeah, serious God. The work you do it. I don't have money. God doesn't understand that language. Jesus told the people, feed, give them something to eat. He said, where can we get a thing from? He doesn't understand that. They said to Elijah, he said, go and check. He said, sir, there is no sign. Elijah said, we don't accept no here. Go back and check. Seven times he said, go back and check. If your man is not tough, you can never be a revivalist. And today, I am speaking generally. I feel in my spirit that the body of Christ had left a lot of things. Do you know what it means to be an occultist? You, get, you just get up and say, he's an occultist. He's, go and try one. You must be tough to be an occultist. You, see, you, you have not even seen angels before. If you're an occultist, you see spirits. Black stories. Deadly things. Even wickedness, those are the other side. They need a tough mind to be able to survive in such a thing. You can't be here and be weak like that. You can't be here and be weak like that. No. From today, anybody that threatens you with power. Anybody that threatens you with darkness. Everybody lift up your hands. Matula makada bahaya, asaka tona masantas, akula masanda baha, famalakotes, 
started moving around like this. Then he said, Satan, check it back. Move it back. Move it back to his position. The bed was moving, moving. And he said, drop it. The bed dropped and he went and lied on it. <laughs> you think God is not proud of men like this? You think God is not proud of men like this? At the slightest thing, you call Papa. Oh, Papa, 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 Semabao. What is it? The doctors are saying, No, having to be here and be praying, having to be hearing the word of faith, hold that report, speak to that report, hold that report, speak to that report, pick up your child, lay your hands on his head, speak into his life, speak into the life of your daughter. Your mind must be tough. You are a custodian of the power of God. I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hands right now. Wherever the devil has defeated the church, defeated the body of Christ, defeated your life, God is about to lift us up. God is about to move us into a different dimension. Lift your hands. Have you ever ridden a bicycle before? You have you ever ridden a bicycle before? Come. Have you ever ridden a bicycle before? Huh? Yeah. At where? Long ago. Stand. Anything that is making your life move like a bicycle tire doesn't move fast. It's just moving slowly. Anything that makes your life move like a bicycle tire, it doesn't move fast. You need a lot of energy to be exerting and yet it will not be moving like that but hear the word of the lord this is the month of september <laughs> prophetically this is what has happened there is an activation in the spirit and the lord has opened the door i see a door that they even locked with power of course i was standing looking at you and i saw that the lord is about to open that door when that door opens i'm hearing the word speak that's what is coming into your life Amen. speed is what is coming into your life in the name of jesus right now everybody lift up your hands you are declaring by the power of god stand yourself come back we are praying in two minutes i'm done with you and i'm gone we are declaring wherever you were not down you are rising up again whatever god has called you to do that the devil has put a fight on you and you have backed off from that assignment Prof, the Bible, the Gideons, it was two gentlemen. They were business guys. They were sitting one time, they checked into a hotel, they, they were having coffee. And whilst they were having a discussion about their business and work, they started talking about how they could print Bibles. These were businessmen. Businessmen. Another person joined them in a discussion. And that's how they came, put their resources together and decided to print the, the Gideons Bible. It was printed by businessmen. Not pastors, not theologians. They put their money together. And that's how, you've seen the Gideon Bible before. The small one you've been putting in your pocket. Now you have the big ones. It was businessmen. And now it's all over the world. That is their assignment. Their assignment. So that when you check into a hotel to do something bad with a woman who is not your wife, you see the Gideon's Bible there. Oh, how many of you have slept in guest rooms and you see that Bible? It's there. When you are frustrated, the Bible is there. If you don't believe in God, it is there. And there have been many documentaries and testimonies of people who read those things. And their lives were transformed. They were businessmen. That is their calling. To bring a revival. Wherever you are. When we talk about this thing, don't think about holding microphone. Not every one of us hold microphone on the pulpit. Not all of us. Not all of us. Daniel was called into the court of kings. He was one politician who showed the people in his time that he can be a politician and still be prayerful and still be seeing visions. And angels will come to you. Today we have corrupt politicians. We have Christians who enter into politics and their assignment is to steal. 
But Daniel showed us that you can be dead and still be righteous and see visions of heaven. He said, he said and I saw the court of heaven. Sir, Daniel was the first person who saw that and realized that in heaven there are thrones and God has a throne and there is a court. A seat. And he said the heavens rule in their first. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. When we are speaking about revival, we are talking about holistic revival. Political revival. Somebody will step into politics and bring a whole change. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Wherever Satan knocks you down, pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. In one minute, every one of us here. The area God has called me to and has called you to, we are trying to push our head through, knock our head through. And each time we try that, there is always a fight and we want to back off. Today, we will not back off. Grace will rest on us. Power will rest on us. Authority will rest on us. And you and I will be able to do what God has called us to do. Clap your hands in 60 seconds. Pray that prayer right now. That's your last prayer. Pray that prayer. You are a voice. Your business is a voice. Your ministry is a voice. Your career is a voice. Your education is a voice. Thirty seconds, everybody pray.